Last week, I started playing with Framer Sites. It's currently in beta, but we live streamed my very first experience using it. And it was a lot of fun. I got a little bit frustrated because I didn't know how to use the tool and we kept bumping into some sharp corners, but eventually found our way there. If you want to watch that live stream, be sure to go back and check it out. But I've been spending the weekend playing a lot more with Framer Sites and learning a little bit more about how it works, how components work, and also learning about how some of the cool effects can actually bring your designs to life. One thing that I found when I was looking at the site's beta uh, integrations page was that as you scroll, I noticed this internal scrolling effect on these this column of integrations, and I thought it was really cool. And actually, the crazy thing about this is all recreated. I think their whole page here is built with Framer Sites. So I knew that this effect was possible with Framer Sites, so I started poking. And what I ended up building was a page that looks like this. It's not quite the same, but you get the idea. So the way this works is I have three sections showcasing some app UI. And as I scroll, the contents of those phone screens scroll at a different rate than I'm scrolling the page. And there's some more subtle effects like little accessory blobs here that all have different scroll speeds and adds weight to the page, makes it a little bit more visually interesting. And what I was amazed by is how simple this is to build. And you'll notice, of course, I'm deployed on the web. This isn't just a prototype. This is something that you can ship to the internet and it's this buttery smooth on someone's browser. So this video is a tutorial for how to create this effect. Let's get started. I have a brand new document here in Framer and we can go ahead and get rid of a couple things like this navigation. We don't need that where we're going. Let's start by drawing a frame. I'll center align it. I'll give it a little bit of a radius and we will make it, how about a uh, pastel -y purple say? Yeah, like that. Okay. That's great. Now, here's what we know we're going to have to do right off the bat. We need it to clip all of the contents of the section. So we can add some overflow hidden. I've gone ahead and pre-downloaded the Facebook design Apple hardware templates. So I have an image of an iPhone 13. We can just drag that in. Resize. Maybe something like that. And we can put this inside of our frame. We'll call this a section and that's clipped correctly. Now what we need is to figure out how to get some contents onto that phone screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'll select this device. I'm gonna lock it because I don't wanna interact with it anymore. And now I can draw a frame underneath. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is literally just a, a clipping container. I'll hit Option Command down to send it behind our phone. We'll call this the phone content bounds and set it to white. Now we need some UI here, but I don't wanna recreate that from scratch. So what I did is I went to Figma and just searched the community for iOS. And I found the stock app iOS UI kit by Dimas Wibuo, and I duplicated that. And here's what it looks like. Let's just grab some stuff. I'm gonna grab this grid of little stock panels. And what we do is run a plugin that Framer makes called Framer Copy Paste. That's copied. And now we can go back to Framer select our phone content bounds, paste. And just like that, there are those little panels. And so now what we can do is we can reposition them a little bit further down here. We'll call this the UI. And this is where we add an effect. So we can add an effect, scroll speed, and we want it to scroll a little bit faster than the user's current scroll position. So I'm gonna set that to 120%. And uh, we won't preview it yet because we don't have enough content on this page for it to make sense. So let's go ahead and add a couple of our other accessories. We have these little blobs and some text. So let's start with our text. This is a headline. And this is a subheading. Let's go ahead and make this big. I'll give it some weight. I'll give it some size. This one can be maybe medium a little bit bigger. And let's do a little bit of color sampling so that it feels like it's part of this section. That can be a dark purple, and that can be the same purple, but maybe at a lower opacity like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw these into a stack because I want this to be centered no, no matter how long that text is in case it wraps onto two lines. So the way I do that is I, I just put it into a stack. I'm gonna set the width and height to be fixed. 
Then I can resize that container like this. And we can change our alignment to be left, distribution to center, and add some left padding, maybe something like that. That looks pretty good. So now if this, if we were actually typing some content, it'll stay centered. Okay, that's our text. I'm going to call that text and I'm also going to lock that so that we don't accidentally interact with it. Because what we're gonna add now is those little blobs in the background. We're gonna draw some frames and we can send these to the back like that. Give them some radius and uh, control C to sample, make it a little bit darker. Option drag to duplicate, resize, maybe a little bit less radius. And we'll send that to the back as well, a little bit brighter. And then we can do one over here like this, maybe even a little bit smaller. And this one will be even lighter. It should feel very light. Okay, so now that's random. I could play around and make that feel however I want. But what's important is these big elements should feel heavier than these small elements. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a scroll speed and I'm gonna drop it way down to 60. So as I'm scrolling, it feels like I'm doing a lot of work to push up the page. This one, we'll add a scroll speed and maybe this one can be 70. And this one can be a lot faster. Let's make it 90. Now we can also do the same thing for our text. So I'm going to select these two layers and you'll see what this looks like here in a second, but I'll add a scroll speed effect and I'll actually set those to be slower than the user's scroll speed. What that means is that the user will scroll faster than this text. So the text will start to move towards this bottom edge of the container here, the bottom edge of this section. What that will do is it'll leave the text in viewport a little bit longer. So this is a section. We're pretty much done recreating what we have here. We might duplicate that and change up some colors and move these little blobs around. But for now, let's just duplicate, put these into a stack, set up some spacing, and we're ready. Let's preview. We hit this preview button here. Here's our page. And as we scroll, we should see all of these scroll effects coming to life. Now that's pretty cool. You can see here, the smaller blob is moving faster than the larger blobs. Our text is getting closer to the bottom of that section. Uh, lots of cool, interesting dynamic effects here, but the best part about Framer Sites is that this isn't just a prototype. So we can come up here and hit publish and literally in less than a second, I have a URL that I can open up and here it is in the browser working exactly like we just saw. Really cool stuff. If I needed to spend some more time here, we could make this responsive, swap out the contents of the phone screen, move these blobs around, play with colors, but otherwise we're back here and reconnecting it to the original integrations page. That's all that's happening with this design on their page where this list of integrations is scrolling faster than the user's scroll position. So I hope this has been useful. If it was, I'll leave a comment below. I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video.